Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is February 23rd, 2021. And it was on this day, February 23rd, 1965, that the first African woman became the borough president of Manhattan in, the, in New York City. As it turns out, she would be the only woman to have ever hold that position. The first African woman appointed to a federal judgeship in the United States, Constance Bacon Motley, who was born in 1921, has repeatedly blazed new trails for women in the judiciary as well as in politics. Constance Bacon Motley led a distinguished career as both a civil rights attorney and a jurist on the federal bench, representing the voice of both minorities and women during her decades as a practicing attorney. She had also addressed the rights of these same groups from her position on the U.S. District Court of New York State, an energetic, dedicated woman who had devoted her life to the practice of law. She has transcended many stereotypes leveled against members of her sex, earning a reputation as a somewhat uncompromising jurist with little patience for lawyers who overstep their bounds. Upon receiving the Distinguished Alumna Award from Columbia Law School Women's Association, Motley was cited as, quote, a symbol of success at a time when there was enormous discrimination against women and even more against black women, unquote. <laughs> Motley was born in New Haven, Connecticut on September 14, 1921. She was the daughter of immigrants from the West Indies, from the Caribbean, from the island of Nevis to be exact. Motley's father worked as a chef on the campus of Yale University, thus ensuring that his daughter would be exposed to an academic environment. As a child, Motley learned that, about the history of African Americans through her local Sunday school classes, in which teachers sought to address the large number of African Americans in the community. During her high school years, she exhibited both initiative and strong leadership skills, serving as president of the city's youth council and a secretary of New Haven's Adult Community Center. These early experiences would serve Motley well after high school graduation. Although the financial demands of tuition put college out of reach, she was still able to obtain a good job with the National Youth Administration, or the NYA, due to her strong clerical and administrative skills and her public service background. Among Motley's um, tasks, at the NYA was addressing topics of interest at the city's public forums. At one such forum, a talk she presented so impressed local businessman Clarence Blakesley that he offered to put Motley through college. Motley took Blakesley up on his offer and enrolled at Fisk University, later transferring to New York University after a few semesters and graduating with a degree in economics in 1943. Columbia Law School will be next. Motley received her LLB from that institution in 1946. That same year, on August 18, she would marry a local insurance broker named Joel W. Motley, with whom she would eventually have a son. In 1945, even before completing her law degree at Columbia, Motley began to search for a position as a clerk in a local law firm, which was the typical first step in the career path of freshly minted young lawyers. However, after a few interviews in which she barely got past the outer office, the young African woman realized that because of her gender and her race, it would be next to impossible for her to be given a job at a private law firm. She decided instead to apply for a position as a law clerk at the Legal Defense and Education Fund of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, a legal aid society overseen by attorney Thurgood Marshall during the years prior to his 1967 appointment to the U.S. Supreme Court. Marshall would become a mentor to the young law student and Motley would remain at the fund for the next 20 years, becoming assistant counsel in 1950 and the organization's principal trial lawyer in the decade that followed. She was called to the bar of the state of New York in 1948. As principal legal counsel for the NAACP's Legal Defense and Education Fund, Motley was almost exclusively involved in the litigation of civil rights cases, working to end discrimination against African Americans in areas of education, housing, employment, transportation, and public accommodations. 
1954, she wrote the briefs presented to the U.S. Supreme Court arguing the plaintiff's side in Brown versus Board of Education, a landmark civil rights case that resulted in the elimination of the separate but equal clause that allowed the continued segregation of many of the nation's public schools. In the years that followed, Motley would be asked to argue many cases involving issues raised in Brown, appearing in state and federal courts around the country. Ten of her cases would be argued before the U.S. Supreme Court, of those she would win nine. Nine out of ten. Not a bad record. During her travels, she gained experience working with many judges, one of the most notable of whom was Ohio Justice Florence E. Allen, who was the first woman to sit on the bench of either a state Supreme Court or a U.S. Court of Appeals. In 1995, Motley would be the recipient of the New York Women's Bar Association Florence E. Allen Award. The award held a special meaning to Motley as she told the Columbia University record, quote, my role model as a female judge was Florence E. Allen, unquote. In tandem with her work for the NAACP, Motley began a part-time career in government as a member of the New York State Attorney Council on Employment and Unemployment Insurance, a position she held from 1958 to 1965. Her government job became full-time in 1963 when she served out the unexpired term of New York State Senator James Watson. The following year, she was elected to the state senate in her own right and introduced and supported legislation to establish much-needed low- and middle-income housing in New York's urban areas before resigning the following year to pursue another opportunity in politics. In February 1965, February 23rd to be exact, this date in 1965, Motley was elected by the New York City Council to fill a one-year vacancy as president of the Manhattan Borough, and she still holds the record as the only woman to yet occupy that position. Her success in that capacity earned her a full four-year term in office, during which time Motley developed a program for the revitalization of Harlem and East Harlem, winning the city $700,000 in funds to plan much-needed improvements for impoverished areas in New York City. In 1965, on the advice of Supreme Court Justice Ramsey Clark, who had been impressed by Motley's arguments before his court, President Lyndon B. Johnson nominated Motley for a seat on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, the bench that hears all cases arising out of the federal trial courts in Connecticut, New York, and Vermont. However, however, opposition to this nomination was so vocal that Johnson withdrew Motley's name and appointed her instead as one of 28 U.S. District Judges for the Southern District of New York. This post which was confirmed by the Senate in 1966, made her the first African woman to serve as a federal judge. While Motley had to work twice as hard as her white male colleagues to earn the respect of attorneys and her fellow justices, she eventually gained a reputation as a respected and fair-minded jurist. After serving the court as a district judge for over a decade and a half, in 1982, Motley advanced to the position of Chief Justice, holding that post until 1986 with her appointment as Senior Justice. As a Justice on the Federal Judicial Court, or the Federal Judicial Circuit, I should say, Motley has been privileged to hear cases involving diverse, often sophisticated points of law dealing with issues regarding the U.S. Constitution, federal statutes, and disagreements between residents of different states, many of them large corporations. In 1982, she sentenced six Croatian nationalists to prison terms of over 20 years for murder, arson, and extortion. In 1991, in Basic Books versus Kinko Graphics Corporation, the issue of copyright infringement prompted a ruling by Motley that stores that photocopy and sell excerpts of textbooks for inclusion in course packets were required to pay royalties to publishers despite the fact that such photocopies were for educational purposes. And in 1994, in a case involving Vassar College, Motley ruled that the denial of tenure to a former bio biology professor 
was because she was married and thus discriminatory rather than because of poor evaluations. In her lengthy written opinion, Motley noted that the evidence presented at trial showed a pattern of denying tenure to all women educators in the area of sciences that extended back over three decades and that marriage was looked upon by the college as synonymous with needing time off to raise children. In a 1987 decision, Motley addressed the issue of pro probable cause in detaining individuals suspected of violating the law, ruling that without exceptional circumstances, suspects cannot be detained by the police for more than 24 hours without a court ruling that sufficient evidence exists to justify the arrest. New York Legal Aid Society attorney Cesar Serigiano, who had filed the suit on behalf of the plaintiff, was quoted in the New York Times as calling Motley's ruling, quote, the most important decision in the area of defendants' rights in the last 10 years, unquote. In appreciation for her long career in the law, Motley has received many honors and accolades. She was the recipient of the 1984 Candace Award from the National Coalition of 100 Black Women and in 1988 was asked to address an audience at the University of California at Los Angeles as part of the Thurgood Marshall Lecture Series. Her topic, Thurgood Marshall, the early years, recalled the period that she worked alongside the esteemed jurors at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. In the fall of 1997, she served as Juris in Residence at the Indiana University School of Law. For more reading on this incredible, fantastic African woman, I'm going to put some links, some, some references down uh, and, and some links down in the comment section so you can go and get some more information on this woman. France, um, Constant Baker Motley, it was on this day. February 23rd, 1965, that she became the borough president of Manhattan, the only woman to hold that position over the years. All right. Once again, I would like to thank, uh, give a special shout out to President Baba Mosi and the sisters and brothers of the Woodson Banneker Jackson Bay Division, number 330 UNIA ACL Rehabilitation Committee. That's the Universal Negro Improvement, Associ uh, Improvement Association, which was originally founded by the late great Marcus Messiah Garvey and the African Community Leagues. But these folks are helping to promote these daily lessons on their Facebook pages because our goals are the same, and that is to enlighten African people through our glorious past. For those of you who have already subscribed, we thank you. I, I, Say it every day. I cannot thank you um, enough. For those of you who have not yet subscribed, we, we urge you to please do so. Go and subscribe. Become a member of the family. Like and comment. Give us some comments. But most importantly, please share it, especially with the young amongst us. So until tomorrow, this has been Today in African History with Baba Shaka. Masalam.